and speak now, I talk about a phenomenon that I have dubbed the paradox of political powerlessness. So to back up for a second and set the table, in order to get heightened judicial protection from the court under the Equal Protection Clause, you need to show that you are politically powerless. And as Ju Chief Justice Roberts said in interrogating one of the litigants in the Windsor case, uh, another same-sex marriage uh, case, he said, you know, how can you argue that gays and lesbians meet this criterion because you're so politically powerful? And the attorney made a very good argument about how there were remaining barriers to uh, success and how women were deemed to be politically powerless back in 1970, and gays are certainly not where women were at that time. What I would add to that answer, and I thought it was a beautiful answer, this is not, by, uh, this is not a critique, it's a sort of friendly amendment or a friendly addition. What I would say is, uh, in addition to that, there's something naive about expecting that a completely politically powerless group would ever even be on the radar of the court. So until there's a gay rights movement, until there's a disability rights movement, the gay rights cases or the disability rights cases don't even come before the court as cases. So the paradox of political powerlessness is that you have to have a huge amount of political power in order to be deemed politically powerless by the courts. And so that's what I'm talking about in Speak Now when I discuss that paradox.